second generation human rights. And I'll, I'll, I'll connect the narrative in a bit. I just want to flesh this up a little bit. Um, when we're talking about this, we're talking about it in terms of egalite. E G A L I T E. And it's over the E. Egalite, right? Um, obviously, we see that, uh, and I'll talk about this in a second, sort of, uh, it, if you know the etymology of the word, we're thinking egalitarianism, that's really not too far off, but I'll explain that in a second. Um, this originated in the socialist tradition, right? So it originated in the socialist tradition. Right? And it would make sense to talk about the idea of egalitarianism, roughly egalite, um, we see that we have to articulate it within the terms of um, an equal distribution. Not only an equal distribution, but an equal opportunity. Right? So if we're talking about equality in terms of distribution and uh, in, uh, equality in terms of distribution or equality in terms of accessibility and opportunity, we see how that concept relates to this idea of egalite, right? Um, it's a shared collective concept. We also see, sort of historically, and I don't want to do the history too much, but we also see historically, but more important conceptually, why an economic, cultural, and social setting is now relevant, right? If it's the case, conceptually, that we begin with the I, with the individual, with the you, and I recognize that there are certain rights that I have, right? And those rights, at least in this first generation sense, are articulated in terms of a freedom from, and assuming that the political establishment is working properly and it does protect me from, then I now have the time to say, okay, I no longer have to worry about being discriminated against. I no longer have to worry about being falsely arrested and so on and so on and so on. Now that I don't have to worry about that because the political establishment is fulfilling its obligation, its duty, now I can turn my attention to other things. I can turn my attention to making money. I can turn my attention to my cultural affairs. I can turn my attention to social affairs, right? Hence, um, socioeconomic, sociocultural. Insofar as I turn my attention to these affairs because I'm being protected, my first generation rights have been satisfied by the political establishment, now I can start to say that I need more rights. Not, not just, not is it the case that I just need these rights to be protected from, but now I can start to conceptualize. Well, in my attempt to make money with others, to do business with others, I'm starting to see that there, there are practices of, of um, unfair monopolization, biases, so on and so forth. I need someone to protect me in, in an economic realm. Socially, I need someone to protect me. I need rights. I have rights socially. I have rights culturally. So you can see conceptually how we develop from a first generation to a second generation um, concept of rights. Why? Because once my first generation rights have been satisfied from then I no longer have to worry about, sort of conceptually speaking, this assault. And I can turn my, my attention now to um, my interaction uh, in a community with others. All right? So that's, that should be clear. I think that was probably stated. Uh, 2B, it is a response to the abuse of capitalist developments. All right? That's a quote from the text. It is a response to the abuses of capitalist developments as a means of legitimizing the exploitation of the working class, right? There is a sense in which if the government is protecting and satisfying my first generation rights not to be falsely arrested, not to be tortured, not to be enslaved, and so on, I turn my attention to making money now for my family and myself, well, there are going to be um, biases inherent within the institution, especially if we're talking about capitalism, right? And I'm not going to get into a whole spiel on capitalism. But there's going to be biases inherent in the institution. Um, those who produce are going to be disenfranchised from their labor for some extent. Those at the very top are going to make uh, a ton a ton of money. And the vast majority of uh, people are going to be sort of like in the middle, right? Well, it's the labor of uh, the middle class and, and, and especially those in the middle class that have innovative ideas that 
we need to safeguard, right? Because those people, and uh, obviously those of the lowest class, are abused in order to generate more money. So obviously we see that um, this idea of egalitarianism would, would work well in second generation human rights, right? Now, you should immediately see that those in the status quo are going to view, just so that you have a sense of the tension, right? Those in the status quo, those in the political elite, those in the socioeconomic elite, are going to view the demands for second generation, this is very technical now, they're going to view the demands of second generation rights by the masses, by the people, as a threat to their power. And the question is, well, why would they view it as a threat to their power? Because you're asking me, right, think about the, the business owner that grew his business from the ground up. He now has this huge business. He employs several thousand people. And now these people, since they're being protected from and their first generation rights are being satisfied, they start to recognize the socioeconomic disparities between what I'm paying them and what I make. And they say, hey, that's not fair. Our labor is making him really rich. We want more of the, more of the, we want a bigger piece of the pie. And I'm like, you gotta be crazy. So hopefully that ghetto, that ghetto version made sense of it. But that's, that's what's happening, right? All of that jargon that I was saying a, a little bit ago, I had to sort of uh, get a little ghetto so that it was clear. I didn't want to get it too heady this, this, this early. But hopefully you get the sense. That's, that's it's a, a means of protection from economic, socio-economic, socio-cultural ex, uh, exploitation. Socio-economic, socio-cultural It's protection from socio-economic, socio-cultural exploitation. It should make sense, right? Uh, little man wants more. Big man doesn't want to give you any more. And you would conceptually now, and I'm not going to root it historically, but this, the, beauty, the beautiful thing about sort of theoretical analysis is after you do it a while, and this is what I encourage especially grad students to do all the time, is to think about the relationship of the concepts within itself, right? Interdependent. The, fir the first thing that we just said, the quote, uh, at the very top of uh, the section in three, three generations are stood to be cumulative, overlapping, and it is important to know interdependent and interpenetrating, right? How is it interpenetrating? Well, insofar as my socioeconomic rights and the disparity between economic accessibility and economic opportunities exist between those who um, are at the highest echelons of socioeconomic power and those who feed the machine, you can immediately start to conceptualize. You don't even need to look at historical data. You can immediately start to conceptualize. I think this is where unions would, would, would um, enter the discourse. Wouldn't it be the case that unions would enter the discourse precisely at the instance of second generation um, articulation of human rights? Absolutely. This is exactly when we start to talk about unions and union representation and so on, right? Why do unions um, gain emphasis, gain momentum in this particular uh, discourse? Because when we're talking about second generation rights, right, we have uh, the, um, I'll say, the higher socio-eco, because we're talking about economic now, right? Then we have the labor force, right? Tons of capital here, little bit of capital here, right? And there's this huge disparity, right? It's precisely in the attempt to make sense of a, a more, at least for the masses, right? A more um, egalitarian, a better shared, a more, the word socialized is pretty loaded, but a more socialized, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? distribution, a more socialized distribution of wealth, a more socialized distribution, and it doesn't have to be socialism bona fide, but a more socialized distribution of wealth that unions take place, right? right? Unions are situated precisely within this discourse, right? Unions say, hey, you talk to us and we'll talk to the man for you. The man doesn't talk to the people, the man talks to the unions, 
right? The man talks to 